Between the years of 1999 and 2003, five women were found murdered in the city of Lawton, Oklahoma. The five women all lived a similar life of drug dependency and prostitution, working out of the pay-by-the-hour cash road motels down towards Fort Sill Boulevard in Lawton. Lawton's Cash Road, now a bustling corridor of businesses and restaurants. But you don't have to look far for evidence of its much different past. This is the area where our uh, missing women went missing from. Many times this was the last uh, place that they were seen. Most of the budget motels are gone, replaced by fast food and retail stores. Five women, maybe more, were killed under similar circumstances over a four-year period 20 years ago. They were undressed and dumped in rural areas in or near water, all lived what OSBI called a high-risk lifestyle. They were substance abuse uh, users and they supplemented their substance abuse by engaging in sex work. Some of them knew each other, um, they were all engaged in the same um, sex work in the same area. There was Pamela Woodring, found in the water off of a country bridge in eastern Kiowa County. Rebecca Boyd, known as Kiowa County Jane Doe before OSBI identified her through a DNA match, was found a short distance away. OSBI suspects her case could be related to the other five, but have not officially linked them. The others. Jane Marie Chafton, 28, found in August 1999. Cassandra Lee Ramsey, 25, found in March 2000. Mandy Ann Rate, 21, found in 2002. Janice Marie Bono, 29, found in February 2002. OSBI declined to say how the women were killed. Theories of the killer or killers range from a John or cab driver to a drug dealer, but none of them have panned out. I think anything is open right now. We believe it's possible that it could be one person or a set of persons that committed these crimes. He says agents have aggressively worked the cases. They've interviewed hundreds of people, uh, multiple persons of interest. Uh, we just haven't got the break that that we need. We reach out to family members we could find, but none responded. OSBI also has not spoken to the victims' families. Since they've been gone for so long, and we want to make sure that, that they're not forgotten. A break could be near, though. Francis recently resubmitted evidence to the lab, hoping two decades of improvements in DNA testing and other forensics could finally identify the killer. The guy has been kind of one, two steps ahead of us for almost uh, 20 years now, so we're hoping that the public or maybe a break and on the forensic side will will help us close that gap. The killer or killers could be free right now and never face justice for their crimes. It's possible that the person is still local. It's possible that they've moved on. It's possible that they've been in prison since the last homicide on an unrelated case and that's why they stopped. We're just work, we're working off it. All possibilities right now. Tips from the public could break the case. We're pretty confident that somebody in that area that was around there that time has good information. After two decades, the women need a champion. They deserve to have their voices heard and we are trying our best to be their voice. Shelby Cashman, KOCO 5 News. Shelby, thank you. And OSBI says they aren't out to arrest tipsters. They don't care about what they were doing around Cash Road 20 years ago. They just want to solve these murders. Over the years, speculation has surrounded the case and after 2009, it was speculated that maybe the West Mesa murders case may be possibly linked to the Lawton murders case. West Mesa victims were mostly all involved in prostitution. Ten of the eleven women found in the burial pit in West Mesa in 2009 were from the city of Albuquerque and were reported missing between 2001 and the year 2005. One of the victims found in the burial pit in West Mesa was from Lawton, Oklahoma and not one of the missing females from West Mesa. The victim was 15-year-old Celania Edwards. Law enforcement authorities in Lawton, Oklahoma had classified Celania as an endangered runaway and reported her missing in 2003. In May of 2004, Celania had been seen associating with prostitutes on East Colfax Avenue in Aurora, Colorado. She may have been staying at the Ranger Motel. Could be the victim that holds the key to solving the West Mesa 
Buried Bodies Mystery. Tonight, we have new details about 15-year-old Selenia Edwards from Oklahoma. Now APD is hoping they can learn how Edwards made it to Albuquerque by picking up her trail in Colorado. Valerie Castro is live tonight at 118th and Dennis Chavez with a story you're going to see only on 4. Valerie. Well, a few months after she left Oklahoma, Albuquerque police say Edwards was actually spotted in the Denver metro area. Now, APD says Edwards may have turned to prostitution while she was in Denver. Police say she went by the names Mimi and Chocolate and frequented the Ranger Hotel that's located along East Colfax in Denver, a street well known as a hotbed for prostitution in the Denver area. Police are especially interested in finding three people who Edwards was friends with by the names of Diamond, Ty, and Lucretia. APD says finding out how and why Edwards ended up in Albuquerque after being in Denver is vital to moving this case forward. Was she going from Denver to Albuquerque uh, and trying to make money uh, in both cities? Did she, did she prostitute in Denver and then uh, for some reason get, get information that Albuquerque was better and, the, and that's why she came to Albuquerque? Or was she forced to come to Albuquerque? Albuquerque police say they're also hoping that someone in the Denver area recognizes the acrylic nail that was found with Edwards' remains here on the West Mesa. Of course, they're hoping whoever created that artwork can give police more information about Edwards. Reporting live from the West Mesa, Valerie Castro, Eyewitness News 4. A person who claimed to work at an Oklahoma rescue mission said they saw both Monica Condelaria and Celania Edwards, both cousins and West Mesa victims, at the shelter. It's speculated that maybe Monica was the one who brought Celania to Albuquerque. No cause of death for the majority of the victims was made public except for Mandy Raitt and Janice Buono, whose deaths were initially ruled as an accidental overdose. All of the victims all had enough narcotics in their systems which could have contributed to their deaths. Tanya Hook a 17-year-old female from Lawton, Oklahoma who went missing in June 2003 is considered another victim of the Lawton serial killer and for five years was a Jane Doe until her identity was confirmed in 2008. Her remains were found 70 miles away from Lawton in the town of Cole, Oklahoma. Her cause of death has not been revealed. It has been speculated that 29-year-old Rebecca Boyd from Muskogee who was last seen in July 2002 was another Jane Doe whose remains were discovered in Kiowa County, Oklahoma in 2005 as another victim of the Lawton serial killer. She had family in Lawton who she visited frequently. Her cause of death is also unknown. Investigators have interviewed hundreds of people and many persons of interest have been looked at and numerous theories have been explored. Investigators recently resubmitted DNA but it's unknown what kind of DNA and what piece or pieces of evidence was submitted. Corey Dion Morris, a serial killer known as the Crackhead Killer was considered a person of interest in the Lawton murders. He left Oklahoma in 1999 and moved to Arizona where he went to commit multiple murders. Corey's victims were prostitutes who shared cocaine addictions. He murdered the women whilst having sex with them claiming his victims asked him to choke them during sexual intercourse. On July 19, 2005, a jury found him guilty on five counts of murder and he was sentenced to death. Morris is also assumed to have murdered a sixth woman or the first possible victim in the timeline 43-year-old Janice Irwin but was never charged for her murder. Investigators in Oklahoma tried connecting him to the Lawton murders and it was found out that Morris was in Oklahoma in July 2000. He was stopped and cited for obstructing an officer and permitting an unauthorized person to drive a vehicle, both misdemeanor charges. Corey Morris was questioned by the Oklahoma State Bureau of Investigation prior to the deaths of Pamela Woodring and Tanya Hook. 
Another person of interest was a dentist who lived in Clovis, New Mexico. The dentist's name was James Smith. Smith was serving life in prison for the 2005 kidnapping, rape, and murder of Laura McNaughton when he was considered a possible suspect in the Lawton murders. James Smith was apparently familiar with Oklahoma as he apparently attended a college in Oklahoma City. A 2007 article states investigators had not closed the book on Smith as a person of interest and that he was not the only person being investigated. In the Cassandra Ramsey case, a sketch of a person was made who was last seen with Cassandra Ramsey in October of 1999. The picture is a forensic sketch taken from a friend of Cassandra Ramsey. Cassandra Ramsey left with this man allegedly saying they were going to Texarkana and she was never seen alive again. She went missing in October 1999, and her body was found in March 2000 in a town close to Lawton. This man drove a full-sized Chevy or GMC van that was white with gray or light blue stripes down the side. He is described as a white male, standing around 5 foot 10 with light-colored hair. On June 17, 2000, after being missing for three days, Mandy Ann Rates' remains were found in a small creek by Bethel Road. At around 4 o'clock in the morning on June 17, a deputy with the Comanche County Sheriff's Office was reportedly doing a routine check of an area off of Bethel Road. He was out there because the area was commonly used as a dumping ground for meth dealers to dump remains of their labs once they were done making their product. That morning what he found wasn't a meth lab, but a body of a young woman. Mandy Rate was found naked. But unlike the previous women found, her death was determined to be caused by an accidental cocaine overdose. At the time she was found, there were also no outward signs of trauma that could be discerned. Other than her body, no evidence was found at the scene. According to an interview given to the Lawton Constitution, the Sheriff's Department kept the area that Mandy was found highly monitored yet they would say that her body had likely been there for almost four days. Does the deputy know more and is it a possibility a cop might be involved? The victim just before Mandy, Jane Chafton, made statements that she was going to be next to be killed. This suggests someone known to her, with the power to keep her silent. She was also found with a stone from an earring that had been missing. Did her killer take it shortly before killing her? To leave with her body as a taunt? The five victims considered Lawton serial killer victims were all found under bridges, creeks and in ditches. The Lawton, Oklahoma murders are still unsolved and the Oklahoma State Bureau of Investigation still needs the public's help to find the suspect responsible.